Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering sensitivity, specificity, and various applications to screening tests. This is the third video in my Biostats section, and I would strongly recommend you watch the second one first, which covers 2x2 two two tables and a couple of other definitions you're going to need to understand this video. You can see here for sensitivity, I give a high yield rating of 9. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a rating scale from 1 to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for step 1. If you want to learn more about the high yield rating, please go to my website. The definition of sensitivity would be the percentage of the patients with the disease that receive a positive test result. Put it another way, the percentage chance that the test result will correctly identify a person who actually has the disease. So that's the definition in words, but you also need to know the formulas for all these things. More often than not, you'll use the formula, but it's still important to know the definition because sometimes they ask you concept questions without giving you any numbers. The formula for sensitivity is going to be true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives. Some people memorize it as true positives over the total number of people with disease, but I think the formula that I have written here is a little easier to understand, so I'm going to roll with that. Specificity would be the proportion of patients without the disease that receive a negative test. You can think about it also as the percentage chance that the test will correctly identify a person who is disease free. And the formula for that is going to be true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. But now you also need to understand when you use sensitivity and specificity because it differentiates it from positive predictive value and negative predictive value. Sensitivity and specificity is used to determine the validity of a lab test. So say you've got a new test that was just developed and you're trying to compare it to the old test, you would use sensitivity and specificity. Or say you're trying to decide between two different tests that you could use, you would use these measurements. We're not talking about results that an individual patient has. This is before you have individual results. And obviously it's going to be a percentage or a proportion, so it can go from 0 to 100. It's also important to note that sensitivity and specificity are not affected by prevalence. That's another thing that differentiates it from positive predictive value and negative predictive value. Conceptually, it can be kind of confusing, sensitivity and specificity. So I have a way I think about it that might help you. Imagine you've got two different guns, and the first gun fires when you barely touch the trigger. Even a strong gust of wind could set this gun off. This first gun has high sensitivity and low specificity. It's sensitive to the smallest of signals to fire while not being very specific to an intentional pull of the trigger. With this first gun, you never miss a chance to shoot, which would be sort of similar to false negative, but you also often accidentally fire when you shouldn't. So that would be like a high false positive. For the second gun, only fires when you pull the trigger trigger really, really hard. So this gun, the second one, has high specificity and low sensitivity. It's very specific to only firing when you want it to, which would be a low false positive rate, but at the same time, it's very insensitive to like a weak pull of the trigger. So that would be like a high false negative rate. In the real world, you don't have tests usually that are 100% specific and 100% sensitive. We're usually stuck with trying to figure out whether we want to use a test with higher sensitivity or higher specificity. So it's important to know when you use which. Usually when it comes to screening, you'll have an initial screening test be very sensitive, and then anybody who gets a positive result on that first screening test, you give them a second test, which is the confirmatory test, and you want that one to be really specific. To get the diagnosis of whatever disease you're looking at, you need to have both tests positive. If you look at just either one, you've got a high chance of false positive or false negative. But together, both tests together have relatively low probability of false positive and false negative. So an example of this would be an HIV test. You're going to have a first test, test, which is the ELISA test as your screening test, and then Everybody who gets a positive test result for that first one will get a confirmatory Western blot test. 
The way most people remember this is the spin and snout mnemonics for rule in and rule out, but I don't really love that mnemonic, um, so I sort of made up my own. The fourth letter in the term, either sensitivity or specificity, is the first letter in its use. So sensitivity is used for the screening, and specificity is used for the confirmatory test. There's also a couple specific situations where having really high sensitivity or really high specificity would be important. Imagine you're screening donated blood from a blood bank for bloodborne pathogens. In this case, you want to be very sensitive because the drawbacks of a false negative are way higher than the drawbacks of a false positive. You don't want to be infecting anybody and you know throwing out one bag of blood is not that big of a deal. So you want to be very sensitive. Alternatively, you can think of a disease that doesn't have much mortality or morbidity, so it's not that serious. And say there is a treatment for it, but that treatment has a lot of serious side effects that happen. In that case, you want to be very specific with your diagnoses because the drawback of giving somebody a false positive and then treating them with a potentially serious side effect of the drug would be a big drawback to consider. Here are a list of related topics which I consider low enough yield that I don't even cover them in my videos. I wouldn't spend any time studying this stuff until you've mastered all of the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and want me to make more, please use the social media share buttons at the bottom of each web page on my website. When you do that, you help me by spreading the word and you help out your friends by giving them a useful study aid. It's a win-win for everybody.